So I talked to a friend of mine the other day who had just gotten back from his physical exam with his primary care doctor and was quite depressed. It turns out that his blood pressure was elevated, he had early signs of uh, fatty liver, his cholesterol composition was off, and he had lost muscle mass and gained visceral fat. So in other words, he was metabolically very unhealthy. And this is very typical for someone in their 40s or 50s to present to our medical system where instead of addressing the underlying issue that got them to this state, they would be put on a multitude of medications and countless office visits, which greatly, of course, benefits the medical system. Now, the fact of the matter is that after we turn 30, unless we exercise regularly and intensely and eat a diet that is far removed from the standard American diet as possible, we're losing muscle, gaining fat and becoming increasingly unhealthy. And because we see ourselves in the mirror every day, these changes are not always evident to us unless we reach the point where our health has completely deteriorated. And at this point, energy is low, we don't feel very good. So even if our intentions are good, it is becoming increasingly difficult to change our health trajectory. And even if the advice given to us is good, it may seem overwhelming and we give up before we even start. But I think that there's hope. Even if we are getting older, this does not necessarily mean that we are on a path of deterioration. In fact, improving our physical and mental fitness can be quite rewarding and motivating. And it is possible to be in better shape in our 50s than we were in our 20s and 30s. But where do we start? So as the majority of the mess we're finding ourselves in is caused by our diet, I would start with two simple strategies. And keep in mind, about 80% of all these changes can be fixed with diet. And I think that's very profound, right? So the two changes I would address is when to eat and what to eat. And this needs to be something that is realistic and easy to follow. Now, I recommend that you have all your meals within a 10-hour period every day. This doesn't work for everybody, but this is something is a very general advice that works for most people that I've worked with. Three meals and a protein shake works for most people, although some do work with two meals. The first meal should start roughly two hours after you wake up in the morning. And this is an interesting point here. So a lot of times when I see people struggling with their weight and being metabolically unwell, the pattern looks more like, well, they wake up in the morning and they're not hungry, so they wait to eat. They might have coffee, espresso, whatever and they don't start to eat until later in the day. And in my opinion, that is an issue. A lot of studies have shown starting with a protein-rich breakfast early in the morning, actually, not early, but let's say two hours after you wake up, is very beneficial. And then the meals should actually become less during the day. Because if you don't have that breakfast in the morning, if you skip that, if you wait until 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, until you get hungry, suddenly you're very hungry. And then you start eating junk all day. Also, this might shorten your eating window to an undesirable short time if you do this every day. Now, I like fasting and I want to get to this. I like fasting, you know, at least about 17, 18 hours, one time per week, maybe twice per week. But if we do this every day, if we have a very, very short eating window every day, for many people, this does not work. Of course, some people do well with two meals or one meal a day, but that's the exception, I would say. For most people, the short eating window is actually slowing our metabolism because the body says, hey, listen, I don't have regular energy coming in. I'm going to slow down things I'm doing, right? So anyway, so your first meal should start, again, roughly two hours after you wake up in the morning. For example, if you wake up at seven, start with a big glass of water, followed by coffee, espresso, tea, and any amount without adding any calories in there. Now, this means no sugar, creamer, and so on. This is a common mistake that I see. So people start consuming calories even before they have their breakfast. Breakfast means break fast. You're breaking your fast, right? But if you have calories before, even two, three, or five calories, you spike your insulin ever so slightly. And this is regardless of whether it's carbs or fat or, or protein, actually. All of them will do that. And at that point, you're not fasting anymore. That means also you're not burning fat anymore. And that's counterproductive, right? So if you have your coffee, tea, absolutely fine. I have a triple espresso every morning, but I don't put anything in it. I had to get used to that because I used to put tons of creamer in my coffee. But once you're used to that, it's absolutely fine. It just wakes me up and then I actually work out in the morning, right? So um, I use this time also in the morning to prepare two protein shakes for the day. And I think that's very important for most people. If you want to... Um, Lose weight, one issue I see is that people do not consume enough protein. And this is actually a big issue. We see this predominantly in people that don't get dietary advice. They just get put on something like Ozempic, a GLP-1 agonist, you know, or Munjaro, all the same stuff. They will lose a ton of muscle mass. Now, I believe that's actually also partially due to the medication. I'm not a big fan of these GLP-1 agonists. But besides that, 
it's the dietary changes. They, they cut back on calories altogether. So you're just saying, hey, listen, I'm just going to eat less calories for the day. And of course, you lose some weight initially, but it is actually very, very counterproductive because if you don't consume enough protein, you will end up actually losing muscle mass. And that's a big issue. So having a protein shake one in the morning and one in the afternoon is really helping tremendously increase the fraction of protein in your diet without adding in <clears throat> too many carbs and, and fat. Because remember, fat and carbs do have calories, and we want to kind of keep those in moderation. Fat per se is not bad for us. Absolutely not. I have an issue with the fat we're consuming in terms of seed oils. That's a different topic. But fat is fine. But if we overdo it, fat has per gram about nine calories, whereas carbs and proteins only have, only have four calories per gram. So there's a big difference here, right, obviously. So making protein shakes in the morning, I think, is very useful. And then you have one with your breakfast and the second one strategically between your lunch and your dinner. That's usually around three or four o'clock. It's a very important one. Having a protein-rich shake at that point really prevents you from having an exorbitant dinner and having more hunger in the afternoon and, and you know being tempted to eating things that you know you shouldn't eat, right? So what I do with my protein shake, actually, so again, I prep this in the morning before I have my breakfast even. Um, and then I put in, again, 30 grams per shake. I do two shakes, so 60 grams total of a protein. I use a vanilla flavor because I like that. Has to be a whey protein isolate, in my opinion, uh, because that is, again, devoid of carbs and um, of fats. I add some frozen organic strawberries and blueberries, some ground flax seeds, and about a cup of milk, and of course, a couple, two cups of water. I also prepare my lunch, which consists at the moment, and again, I'm just giving you some of the things that I'm eating. You can certainly tweak that. But my lunch, and I did a video about this, is two cups of low-fat or non-fat Greek yogurt. Many people have said, why don't you use regular fat? That's fine. Yes, there's nothing wrong with the fat in there. But again, total calories will just go up quite a bit, you know, if you use full fat. The processing here is minimal, so I'm not too worried about that. So two cups of Greek yogurt and then a um, small amount of organic unfiltered honey just for sweetness almonds, and then some chocolate, either either a stevia sweetened chocolate or some regular chocolate, but small amounts of that. And, you know, that's it. This is going to be put aside. I take this with me. I have a cooling bag with an ice pack. I put my afternoon protein shake and my lunch in and take it with me to work, right? So nine o'clock then, if you get up at seven, ideally around that time, you sh that should be time for your breakfast. So you sit down, you have your protein shake. This should be the largest meal of your day, ideally. Not the dinner, but the breakfast, first meal. Studies have shown that they did isocaloric studies that shown a large breakfast versus a small breakfast, and then having a small dinner later if you have a large breakfast, showed that people lost a lot more weight. You know, it was some something on the uh, on a scale of 20 pounds versus eight pounds, so a lot more weight loss. But also, very importantly, they were not hungry in the rest of the day. So it's important to start off your day like this. If people do this uh, one meal a day, which I'm not a big fan of, but it works for some people, the better time to have that is also actually in the morning to have that, that meal there. It's actually easier for the distribution of your day, also in terms of hormone response. So I will have the protein shake. Um, that's about 30 grams again. I have three eggs, two rice cakes, a slice of cheese, and um, you know some sliced turkey breast. That's what I eat currently. This might change, but this is what it is. So my breakfast actually is about 50 grams, and that's absolutely fine. Studies have shown you can consume more than the 20 or 30 grams we originally thought. You can consume up to 100 grams and still absorb that, right? So don't worry about the amount of protein at one time coming in, right? And then you eat about every three hours, but nothing in between. And that's the key. No calories in between, no snacking, nothing, right? Big breakfast, 12 o'clock then, so three hours later, lunchtime. This is where I will eat the Greek yogurt I talked about earlier, right? Um, but you can also choose to have like a chicken breast or beef with rice and vegetables. Absolutely fine. So this is really your choice. I would just suggest to prepare these ahead of time. Whenever you go out to restaurants, first of all, it's expensive. Secondly, they put a ton of seed oils in there, which you don't necessarily want. All right. Then um, three o'clock, very important. Three or four is the time for the second protein shake. Remember, we made two in the morning, one with breakfast and the other one. This is very strategic between lunch and dinner. And this is super important because it, this is the time where most people are eating things they shouldn't because, you know, they haven't eaten enough in the morning and they're stressed out. And this is the time where you need the comfort foods, right? If you have that protein shake, guarantee you this will fill you up. It is very lean. It doesn't have a lot of carbs. It doesn't have a lot of fat, high protein. And that actually holds you over until dinner and lets you get away with a small dinner, which is the goal. Remember, big breakfast, medium lunch, small dinner. That's the better way to eat. And it's actually shown in many studies to be conducive for weight loss while keeping muscle if your protein intake is high enough. So three, three to four protein shake and then dinner six or seven. Again, given the schedule, if you wake up at seven in the morning, right? 
Um, and the dinner, again, should be very small, no carbohydrates. So this could be something like beef, chicken, fish with green vegetables or a green salad with a small amount of balsamic vinaigrette. That's absolutely fine. Now, if you want to cook ahead of time, so what I've done lately, and again, this might not be something you like. I'm not the world's best chef, I must admit. I do a chili, which is very easy for me. So what I use is just some grass, uh, sorry, some, yeah, some grass-fed ground beef, organic kidney beans and organic tomato sauce. And then you add in chili powder and spices to your liking. And this is extremely easy to cook and provides dinner or lunch for several days of your week. Now, very importantly, after your dinner, and this is hugely important, brush your teeth immediately because this is a signal to your brain that you're done consuming calories for the day, right? So right after dinner, there's your fasting window now, and that's about 14 hours. If you eat 10 hours, then you have a 14 hour uh, fasting window overnight, and that works for most people. This is not really intermittent fasting. This is just the timing of the eating, which was the first point that was so important. Again, second point is, as I've mentioned in here, is the composition of the food, which is the high protein, low carb, and keep our fat as low as we can while making things taste good. Because if you eat things that you don't like, you're not gonna do this very long. So 14 hours until your next meal, which will be your breakfast, right? There's no calories in that time frame. Also important is that, again, between the meals, between these four distinct meals, if we count that protein shake, you do not consume any calories, but it also means you don't drink any calories. Common mistake people do, they drink things that have calories in them. That could be a soda, or it could be a fruit juice, which we think is healthy, or a smoothie. No, they're not great for us because we can drink a lot more calories than we can eat. We don't need these. When you do a smoothie that tastes somewhat good, it's probably because there's tons of fruit in there, which does have a certain amount of sugar. I think it's a bad idea to drink these. Just stick with water. If you need to flavor it, put like a flavoring with some stevia in there or something like that. That's fine, or monk fruit. But um, do not consume any calories between your meals. This is the big downfall. Why do we gain weight? Again, we wait too long to eat, and then we eat all the time, and we snack in between meals, right? And the snacking, we lose track, and we eat things that we probably shouldn't eat. Also, we keep spiking insulin all the time. Every time you spike insulin, you also store fat. Here, with the schedule, you only spike insulin about four times a day. Now, you might say, I only want to eat twice a day. That's fine. Have two meals a day and one snack. But I would have that protein shake in the afternoon. Again, my recommendation. Now, if you're asking why protein shake, it's not, well... Again, we want to increase the protein so you have about 0.8 gram per pound of body weight, of ideal body weight. So if you weigh 180, but your goal weight is 150, let's say, then go by 150, then 0.8 um, gram per pound will be about 120 grams of protein right there. Now, getting that in lean, that's the issue here, because a lot of foods that have high protein content may also have a high fat content. For example, red meat, right? I like red meat, I have no problem with it. But if you only live off red meat, there's a lot of fat in there as well, right? So when you have a protein shake, it's lean. You know, there's nothing much else in there. And this is very helpful. So this is lean protein that we can consume. Make it in a way, again, if you don't like my recipe, you can change it up. But make it in a way that you like it without putting a bunch of crap in there. That's what you might advise. So these are the two things to start out with. Don't be overwhelmed. Again, it's, it's good to start. Because one thing you'll notice when you eat in this pattern, you should not be hungry throughout the day. You should not have massive spikes in insulin and massive drops you should not have any issues with cravings like in the afternoon, like for snacks and all these kind of things. This should really go away. Second thing is you have more energy because your protein content goes up, you're eating more regularly, you are eating at good times, and you're having time between your meals when you don't eat. So your total calories will be less for the day <clears throat> than you're probably eating right now if you're overweight, right? But also with the schedule, it's actually very easy to, to prepare healthy foods. Because besides um, the protein content, the other part of this composition that I've outlined here is these are foods that are mostly single ingredients, right? These are not packaged foods. These are not pre-made breads and pasta and all these things. I have an issue with our U.S. wheat here because it's not the greatest. It's been hybridized in the 40s and 50s, very high gluten content, and we put things like potassium bromate and all that crap in there that you really don't want in there. So cutting out baked goods is a good idea in my opinion. What I do, and as I mentioned in here, what I'm eating right now is rice cakes. That's not for everybody. If you find a good bread, like an einkorn bread, or you can get a sprouted bread, you know, uh, Ezekiel is one example. If you like that, that's fine. You can have one or two slices of that throughout the day, like one in the morning, one for lunch, for example, no problem. I just find that in general, you know, um, all these grains, they cause uh, some issues. Again, they put other stuff in that I don't like, and it's not really conducive for weight loss. So as best as you can cut them out, the better. If you have a very good bread, like I said, a couple of slices a day is fine. But again, with this composition, most of these uh, components are single ingredients. Uh, 
if you have fruit, like uh, I mentioned, the frozen blueberries and strawberries for the protein shake, I would get those organic. Every fruit that's not organic is sprayed heavily with glyphosate and other things that put on there, you know, pesticides, herbicides, whatever. Hard to wash off, especially when it's berries, you really can't. So it's best to get those organic. A bit more expensive, but if you get it frozen, it's actually not so bad. So these are two steps to start out, right? And then again, the exercise, of course, there's other components to change in your health. But ideally, as you lose that visceral body fat, as you're eating healthier, as you're as you stop spiking your insulin, as a hemoglobin A1C comes down, so you get away with drifting towards type 2 diabetes, which my friend did, and I myself a few years ago was in the same boat, right? You start feeling better, you're going to have more energy. And as this energy comes back, as you change the diet, remember that's about 80% of the positive change you can make to change your health for the better, you'll see you have more energy to work out. <clears throat> you're going to be like, hey, listen, I'm losing weight, I'm feeling better, I'm sleeping better, I have more energy. Now I'm going to incorporate a workout, and that's for another video, but I think this is a great way to start. Two things you can implement as of today. Again, determine your eating schedule. So when to eat, 10 hour time frame, three to four distinct meals, nothing in between. That's the timing of it. And number two, the composition. Again, protein on the high side. Always check, of course, if you have any kidney disease or whatever, check with your physician if you can eat 0 0.8 gram per pound. I think that's still very reasonable. So these are two easy changes, in my opinion, that can be very profound, and it's a great basis to start improving your health.